Hi, my name is Michelle, and this is take number two for me, so I'm hoping this video will go a little bit better. Um, anyways, I have been using Heart of Dakota for my all with my kids for up until this point, but then we hit resurrection to reformation and things shifted a little bit. So my oldest um, started to struggle a little bit with some of the workload, but also um, anxiety in general. So we decided to shift a little bit and change it up. So right before his sixth grade year, about in the spring of that year, I started feeling like I needed to shift and I looked around, I researched, and I found that there are some amazing, amazing programs out there and that are free. So I will show you later some of the websites that kind of got me to that point. But one of the things I really wanted to do was up to this point, we had only been studying kind of ancient history, American history, and one of the areas that he loved was modern history, and we had not touched on that yet. And so I found a really great program that walked through modern history and then also um, some various things that I will, again, walk you through. But what I wanted to point out was I also was able to create a schedule for my son so that every day when he started, he did he, he went and he could just use this to know what he was doing. And every day was a little bit different. One thing that was the same was at breakfast. That's when we did our uh, morning school. And what I decided to do, I found a um, wonderful teaching resource, and you can Google it to find it. It's a printable resource, but it's something that was called Missions in Modern Day History. And every single day, um, they have multiple days, like they have a whole year's worth of a curriculum. But uh, and at the very bottom, it says on here, Teaching with God's Heart for the World, Volume 2. There was also a Volume 1 as well. And I just went through and printed off, and then I made it my own. So I did lots of scribbles, and then each day, is labeled of what they would need to do so or what he needed to do so there was um, sometimes four things some days it was just reading in the bible sometimes it was thinking about the world and other times it was specifically about the world wars um, and other things that were going on in the world in that area so along with this i also found a wonderful website um, by Tana Meyer, the proverbial homemaker. And she has a bunch of printables related to um, kind of missions in the world as well. So I found a couple of hers and I just started putting all these pieces together to make the, the morning breakfast time be something for him that would focus on prayer, missions, uh, the Bible, and also looking at missionaries. So we looked through the YWAM series. This is one of the few things I did purchase was these um, YWAM books about the Christian heroes then and now. I tried to stick with ones who were alive during the 1900s and also from ones from various places in the world. So I tried to pick one in Asia, one in Central America, South America, Europe, um, Australia, and um, lots of European ones during World War II. And I don't remember, in Africa, we had Africa, and I don't think we had any, any from North America, but uh, all over the rest of the world. So, okay, so then after breakfast, and he did his chores and that kind of stuff, he'd come upstairs, and there would be this binder. Now, this binder also had the breakfast stuff as well. But what happened is then each part of his day would be divided up into sections. And this made my life so much easier because all he had to do was find the section he needed. And according to the day, he would follow each of the different um, things for that day. Now, what I would like to do next is just show you um, what we used then and how we decided um, or how I decided what to pick. And this is where I'm excited to share the resources that helped me so much. Okay. So um, this website, which I'm not at the beginning, but this woman's website helped me so much because she gave me the courage to say, I can do this. I can create curriculum on my own. And um, she gave me resources for lots of free stuff. So this is a great website. I'm just going to leave this here and it will show all of the, the options that are available that she recommended. But she was able to point me to this one and easy peasy I'd heard of before I think I had used some things but what's nice about this entire curriculum is that it's free and so what I did is I knew that I wanted to do modern history so I went down to history and found that they had modern history and what's great about this is that when you actually set up the program for your student they will have their own page that is set up and they'll have their name and you click on it and that student then can find any assignments for that day they will do specifically so this website will at least walk you through what things you could see, but when the student clicks onto the website, they're not going to have all of this busyness on their page. Um, but you can just see some of the things. There are different levels here. Sometimes they'll be reading about 
somebody. Sometimes they might be watching a video. When it gets to World War II, there's a lot of map making and things so they can see the differences um, before and after the wars. And anyways, it's just got a lot of really interesting things, though, that we studied pretty much from the end of the Civil War all the way through about President Obama, I think. So it kind of did a whole uh, bunch of things. They also worked on a timeline, or he also made a timeline as the year went on. So this was a great, great resource, um, which started off his day. And then because we were kind of talking about modern things, we also used the science, um, physical and chemistry. So this has some printables just like the history ones too. I just went ahead and printed them all off and organized them in the binder. And in my binder, I also would put blank pieces of paper where if they had to answer questions or things like that, they could do that work there. So you can just pretty much print off from the website. It gives you all the supplies you might need and it gives you activities that they would do. So each day, um, it would give him what he needed. Sometimes he'd watch a video about something. Sometimes it would be printing out things they would work on the, um, I, for my son, he made it on the wall, a, a, an elements, I guess you would say poster. He'd put, look at each one of the elements. We didn't do all of them, but many of them, and then put them on there. Sometimes there'd be experiments. Other times it would just be, um, like I said, this is a video of how steam engines work and animation of steam engines. And then they would have to explain how a steam engine works. So this fit along pretty well with the modern history. So that was always a part of a day. He did history every day and science every day. And then another thing that he would do each day, which I found on here, was Spanish. So, oops, sorry. One thing I loved is I, I was a foreign language teacher, so I liked how the first about 50 days they spent doing work um, comparing cognates. So rather than just go straight into here's Spanish, they said, let's listen to Spanish words. Let's listen to French words. Let's listen to Latin words and compare them to English and see how are they related to each other? How do they borrow from each other? So they did a really good, um, good way of setting a foundation of listening to to sounds and listening for words that might you might already know. So before they even jump into what are the words you know in Spanish, here are some ways to listen. So that is a really nice thing. And that my sons have now done that for a couple of years. And, and it's been, again, a nice, easy, free system. My son also at the time was interested in doing German. And so he did that on Duolingo. So he did Spanish three days a week and then German twice a week. We also used Easy Peasy for language arts. And I'm going to show you a little bit later how I tweaked it. Uh, one of the language arts things on here that I liked was that my son, who loves being on the computer and loves playing games, often was doing a game. So he, like this, for example, a video to remind yourself about syllables. So it'd be a video, but then he might do a quick little game to practice his spelling. So for someone who likes to do games, this was a great opportunity rather than have to just do spelling by hand um, or, you know, a quick flashcard thing. So he would switch between grammar activities to writing activities. And so in his binder, I just would set up uh, ways that he, if he had to write anything, he would write those things down. And then the way I mixed it up is that I would take this, he would do this program um, twice a week. And then two other times he did a grammar, um, yeah, twice a week, a grammar website. And I'll have to find this later, but this woman created this amazing free grammar. Well, actually, she did a lot of free things, but you can print off all of, all of it um, for sixth grade. You can do down through first grade and then even probably up through high school. But it was just... Um, something that you could practice every day to focus on writing down grammar. So I wanted to make sure not to just, just do computerized one, but they also had places to write as well. So that was that. And then there was another one, which I'll show you in a little bit here, but we also then did reading. Oops. Now with reading, I'll have to show you how I tweaked this as well. Again, you have to do everything that works for you and for your student. The thing I liked about some of the reading things is they did do some poetry and then there. Um, so what I would do is I would pick the lessons that I really liked and I only went through a certain number and then I would switch out with some literature, which I'll again show you how to get that research uh, that as well. So you can tweak this and do this however you want to. But again, it's all free. And if you have if there if you choose to do the books that they have on here, they have links that just go straight to the book. So you don't even have to do any purchasing if you don't want to. I did something a little bit different just because it was what fit for us. Also, they have um, music, if I find music, they had modern music. So one day a week he would do music and it would relate to the topic we were talking about. 
And again, it was by levels. And what was nice is you get to listen to specific music that related to even like the European music during World War One, and then also jazz and just great things from the 1900s. So I really liked what, hearing him talk about the music. And again, everything was linked on there. So if it was listening to something, you it would it would already have it for you. You didn't have to purchase anything. Also, there was art with modern. So we did that once a week. And then uh, modern art is not always my favorite, but what's cool is it's really fun to, to do. So he uh, was able to make some really creative things, drawing some things in modern style, and then also looking at how art changed over the 1900s. So that was a really great resource as well. So we really use this easy peasy website a lot. And actually I've continued to use it on even into the, into this year, which I'll talk about in another video. We also use their PE program. Again, this was a once a week program and it, uh, was really simple stuff. I mean, you had health and safety type things, but you also had exercise. But this was great. It just would come up once a week. It was already done. I didn't have to create anything. It was already there. The last thing I did was um, computer. So I, I don't know, whatever level your child is is on, they could start off at the beginning level. Um, so if they've never done anything about computers, they can start at the first level or, or go from there. I mean, I'm just picking first level, but it can be any of the levels. And it just walks you through very basic, basic computer information. I was talking like, you know, vocabulary of stuff practicing opening and closing things, maybe creating some very basic documents. But again, this website is awesome because it's all free and it's all there. So next I wanted to show you this. This is our once a week with language arts. I had them do this program. Now, if I can scroll down, this was through Hammer, Hammer Mill, the paper company, has a middle school uh, curriculum. And it doesn't actually look like this. I don't think it's all in one book, but they focus on three ways of practice writing. So there's um, fiction, nonfiction, and poetry through Lucy, Maud Montgomery, Frederick Douglass, and Wilfred Owen. And inside, there are wonderful chances for them to write down, uh, how to learn how to become a better writer. So this was a really good writing program. It taught them how to do first drafts, second drafts, um, final drafts, using editing processes and peer editing. And then um, also just lots of skills with writing. But again, one thing I don't remember about this is whether it was free or if I had to pay for it. So um, at the end, like, I think you just filled out this information and they mailed it to you. I don't really remember. But anyways, the point is I had a, a paper, a physical copy of that. So check that out. It's a really great um, resource. This is what we used for math was teaching textbooks because Singapore had just kind of gone crazy. So we just went ahead and did math six. That's where we were at. It works really well for those kids who need something explained to them. And you're starting to feel like you can't explain it as much. It allows them to feel confident about what they're learning. They have some practice exercises and then they do actual problems. Now, when they do it and they they, they turn in their answer. If they need to make a correction, uh, they can sometimes do it in there or try again. And if they get it wrong, they can usually, it can usually be explained to them. So that's a great math program. Now, one of the things that the website that I had started with came from is that she pointed me to some amazing free electives, which I had never heard about. So here's one of them. This is the learn to type. So if your child has never done typing before, this was a free program. You can sign up and go through anything from typing to um, online behavior, computer basics, coding fundamentals. There's a lot of free um, resources on here. So this was a great website. Another one that we did was this one. It's a middle school free program called Foolproof Me. And the goal of this was basically to teach uh, how, teach your middle school student how to be a good consumer. So when they watch commercials, how are they how are they thinking critically about what they're watching? Are they believing everything they listen to or should they listen with a healthy skepticism? So what I liked about this is once you sign in, like once you create an account for this, that it walks them through a module a week or however many times you offer to do it. And they learn um, different, different things. I'm trying to figure out. All right. So let's see. I'm trying to think if they have any other ones in here. So look here, what are Tony the Tiger and friends really designed to do about marketing? So there's some marketing schools. What's the impact of marketing? And um, anyways, I just really, I really enjoyed this uh, middle school program for him. 
All right, so that's another wonderful free website. You can just set up your own account and they log in and they go from there. And then another one that was free and really helpful was this computer basis class. So it's, again, very basic. You set up an account, they go in, and then they just go through each of these different things. So they can just generally learn about computers. And when they're doing their account, they would read through, sometimes they're watching videos, they're learning vocabulary, and they're just getting all the information that they might possibly need. So this was a great free website. And again, I had never heard of some of these sites, so I was so thankful to find this. Okay, okay, so the last thing I wanna show you is just from all of those different websites, I would make a section in their binder and I would go through and just organize and think, okay, how many days would they be doing this? And then create a uh, checklist. So it would be like, a you know, as this today is your module, what day did you do it? And go from there. So this was their his computer skills. I would also write down the password and, in, and login information so he didn't have to remember it. Um, and then with the foolproof uh, one that I mentioned, they also have printables you can print off so that you can walk through um, what they would do each day. And what was neat about those is he really got engaged in those programs. Now those, there were only about I think eight modules or nine or something like that. And I found that he went through them and, and did it really well. So we kind of moved on from there into a cooking thing. And I found this website as well. This was Food Literacy Center. They have specific lessons to different food ideas. And what's neat is that they walk you through and just make help you do some um, discussions about food. And then it also has recipes and activities that are inside of it too. So Food Literacy Center has a whole bunch of different uh, lessons. I have at least 13 or so here. Um, and then we I had another one. Sorry, there's so many. And this one was called Young Chefs Program uh, from Cooking to Science. And this has lots of lesson plans related to the science behind food. So this one was the quest for the perfect cookie. And then we did um, infusions, like how to get hot in different types of food. What's the deal with eggs? What happens if you use um, too little, too, too much? Anyway, so there's a bunch of cooking things and science cooking things that we did as, as things throughout the school year. So I just want to real quick walk you through the binder. Again, each section has its own thing. The history, I, I printed out the worksheets, but also inside would make um, pages where it would just be a piece of paper and then he would write down the information needed. Every so often he'd be working on a PowerPoint. So um, one of the things that I wanted him to practice was PowerPoint skills. And so when he would get to a thing that say, um, write a summary on this chapter, I allowed him to do that on PowerPoint and then he could bring in pictures or sound if he wanted to. So, and then here's an example, one of the printables that the Easy Peasy program would, would set up for you. So there was a section for that, a section for science, um, same thing with that. Sometimes there would be a printable and other times I would just write um, stuff so that he could write it there. And then Spanish, most of Spanish was all, I just, you just need to put some notebook paper in there. Now with language arts, I printed off the printables here, but what I did is I mixed them in with a couple of things. So I had, again, I'll have to find the name of that one free website with the grammar, but then you can print off different print, print, grammar principles and then they would just work on the packet um, as, as they go. So the nice thing about the language arts on the grammar end is there's lots of resources out there, so you can definitely use those. Now for reading, I mentioned how I tweaked it because I didn't want to go, some of the books that they were chosen there were either old, really old or just not very relevant. And so I did like some of the poetry stuff, which is because I'm not very good at doing poetry, but um, then I found the McGraw, I'm sorry, I'm going to say this wrong, so I want to make sure to get it right. Okay, Glencoe McGraw Hill. On their website, they have a ton of free printables of so many different books, so you can go in and pick any books that you want to. Um, so I printed out the ones that I wanted to do for this lesson, and then I would just divide this up into days. So this first day was just kind of an introduction day, um, and again, these are all things that were able to be printed off, and then on a specific day he would read something and maybe some vocabulary but then it would also tell him i would write down what chapters he had to read so i can get back to the book of so many so the only things i ended up purchasing this year were the books that i wanted him to read like this and then also the um, missionary books and his math program so those are the only things i really had to print but again some of these you might even have just laying around your house so you could even just do that for free as well now there were a few i think i had 
all of these, let me just check to make sure. So he did a wrinkle in time, which was quite a challenge for him. Um, and then we did, uh, and some of the things that came on the printables, I ended up just, you know, tweaking, crossing out, not doing. Now, this is one that I really wanted to do this book, but I couldn't find it on that website, but I found a free one somewhere else. So this book, Unbroken, I found a free printable um, curriculum guide that goes along with this as well. So you can find the things you need, tweak them for the books that you wanted, and go from there. But most of the other books I found on there, um, I think, oh, this was one I also had to, I found and had to print off. Again, I just would type in free curriculum guide for these books, and then I would just find one that would work. So this was a great book related to uh, right after the Berlin Wall went up and a family got divided on both halves and what life was like behind the wall on the eastern side and the western side. Fabulous, fabulous book. But uh, like this one, they had they had numbered the stars on that Glencoe one, uh, Julie of the Wolves. And then somewhere in there, we read The Hobbit, but I'm trying to remember if we did anything special for that. Anyways, those are the books that I picked, but the great thing was all of those were free printable um, things that we could, we could do. So in the end, then I just ended up printing off any other things for the art and music, life skills, anything that they needed to have printed off, I just went from there. So this was kind of just a big overview of what ended up working. I really liked how independent he worked, and I loved how much he was excited about what he learned. Even if he didn't always understand the literature or the history that we were talking about, he really learned a lot about um, computer skills and elective things that we had not done up to that point. And for me, um, knowing that going into the world that we live in, I didn't want him to not have some of those skills. And at the time we were going, I recognized that in Hard Dakota, they may not have been learning that until later. So I thought, why don't we do this? Why don't we try it out? So anyways, that was a lot of information, but I wanted to walk you through what ended up working out for my sixth grade student. And what I loved the best was it was that trusting the Lord that he sometimes will put a seed in your heart that says, trust me. And when I trusted him, I held his hand, he walked me, and this all just kind of came together through the different resources. And it ended up working better than if I had tried pushing him to do the next year's curriculum that um, maybe wouldn't have worked out. So if you're in the same boat, let me know. And um, I understand, and it's not always easy, especially since I've been calling my my website this the whole time. So if you have any other uh, suggestions of what name I should give it, that would be amazing. Thanks and have a great